Hello, welcome to another video. Just want to say if you do like this video or other videos on my channel, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps uh, build the channel. I'm trying to build it up now. I only have a few followers, but um, hoping to grow this thing out. So like, commenting, subscribing would be a big help, as well as sharing it if you find this valuable. All right, today we're going to be talking about protein. Uh, there is, a, in my opinion, a misconception about protein that too much protein will kick you out of ketosis, it will produce a lot of insulin, that you should limit your protein. In fact, that you should do these macros where you need to eat 80% fat and only 20% protein and you really need to limit that. Uh, this video is about how that is absolute nonsense and that's a horrible idea long term to do. So, and I'm going to explain why. So Dr. Benjamin Bickman is a professor at Brigham Young University and he specializes in uh, molecular mechanisms. And if you look at this here, okay, he is currently exploring the contrasting roles of insulin and ketones as a key driver of metabolic function. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today exactly, and that's his specialty. So I'm gonna link a, a video in the description below. Uh, so if you wanna hear Dr. Bankman talk about this topic in much more detail, this is just a summary, uh, you can check him out. All right. All right, so the first thing we're going to be talking about are two key hormones that determine if you are going to be storing or if you're going to be burning, right? So they are insulin and glucagon. Uh, they are made by your pancreas. And insulin is the hormone of feeding and storing, and glucagon is the hormone of fasting and burning. And they are antagonistic to one another. And actually, when there's a tie, insulin tends to win. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. So. Um, we're going to be start first focusing on three areas that these hormones uh, impact. The first one is muscles. Okay, so glycogenesis and protein synthesis, both enacted by insulin. Okay, so what's glycogenesis? Well, it's the uh, creation and storage of glycogen in your in your muscles. Simply put, as far as, as same protein synthesis, synthesizing proteins to for building up muscle again. Think about that, storing and building. That's what insulin does. That's its job. Okay. Glucagon seems to have no impact on your muscles. All right, let's move on. Your fat cells. Okay. So insulin promotes the growth of stored lipids through lipogenesis. So lipogenesis literally just translates to the creation of new fat. So, I mean, that's the simplest way to explain it. So insulin promotes the growth of stored lipids through the creation of new fat through this lipogenesis process. All right, so what does glucagon do? Well, glucagon actually promotes the breakdown of fats through lipolysis. So lipolysis is burning fat. So you can see how if you had more glucagon to insulin, you'd be promoting burning fat instead of storing fat in your fat cells. That's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to get into that in a second. All right, so your liver. So there's a few key areas here. So obviously, again, uh, creating new fat in your liver and not just in, in your liver, but also to be stored elsewhere happens through insulin. OK, uh, glucagon actually promotes lipolysis. It actually promotes ketogenesis. And that's one of the key drivers of this presentation. So glucagon promotes the making of new ketones. All right, let's move on. So we're going to get into the insulin to glucagon ratio. So what is it? It is an indicator of the predominating metabolic function in your body. So you have two metabolic functions we're going to be talking about, anabolic and catabolic. So a high insulin to glucagon ratio is anabolic. What does that mean? Well, again, if you think of storage, okay, if you think of building and storage, that's the anabolic state. So when you have a high, when you have more insulin than you have glucagon, you are predominantly in this anabolic, metabolic state. So uh, if you have this ratio all the time, it's going to be really hard for you to get any kind of catabolic benefit. So how do you get them? Well, one way is to have a low insulin to glucagon ratio. Okay, and you can do that. Um, by lowering your insulin and eating foods that promote low insulin and high glucagon. Okay? You can also do it by fasting. You can also do it by caloric restriction. You can do it uh, a few different ways. Here we're going we're gonna to go into them actually. 
All right, so the benefits of a low insulin to glucagon ratio, why would you want that, okay? Well, simply put, it makes you more insulin sensitive, which is a great thing, because insulin resistance is the opposite of insulin sensitivity. And nobody wants to be insulin resistant because it leads to all kinds of problems. All right, autophagy, what's that? Well, autophagy, simply put, is the um, chewing up or garbage collecting of old dead cells and creating brand new cells, okay? Promotes healthy cells, simplest way I can put it. Lipolysis, that's fat burning. Brown fat activation, okay? Brown fat activation is a bit outside of the scope of this video, um, but I'll probably make a video about that, but just all you have to know right now, brown fat activation leads to higher metabolism, leads to more fat burning, simply put, all right? Okay, so people have a, this perspective that um, protein is highly insulogenic. So let's go from a textbook perspective why they may think that. So um, carbs alone by themselves in a vacuum okay, will increase insulin and lower glucagon. All right? Simply. Protein, on the other hand, does something interesting. In a vacuum, it actually increases insulin and increases glucagon. Okay, uh, so that is, that is true. Their textbook perspective, pure form of a macronutrient, protein does raise insulin. All right, fair enough. I'm not going to argue with that. Fats don't raise insulin, okay, and they increase glucagon. So you would think, well, I should just mainly be eating fat then because I want to have this super low insulin and glucagon ratio because I want all these benefits. Not so fast. Okay, let's move on. Context matters. So the amount of increase and decrease is dependent on your underlying glycemic status. So what does that mean? Okay, well, let's take a look at one type of glycemic status, which is a fasted state. A fasted state, this is, comes from Dr. Benjamin Bickman. What they found on average is people in a fasted state have an insulin to glucagon ratio of 0.8, which is pretty low. Okay. When you're in that state, what do you get? Well, you get those benefits I mentioned of a low insulin to glucagon ratio. And you're promoting lipolysis. You're promoting ketogenesis. Okay. All right. Context number two, standard American diet. That's a different underlying glycemic status. Okay. So what they found was that people on a standard American diet on average have an insulin to glucagon ratio of 4.0, which is over four times more insulin and glucagon than someone fasting. All right, so what does that promote? Well, it promotes lipogenesis, glycogenesis. It inhibits autophagy, and it inhibits ketogenesis. So if you're eating a standard American diet, you're not going to be likely in ketogenesis, okay? And how about a low-carb context? Because that's where most people fit in, right? And when I say fasting, I don't mean 16 hours. I mean like 24 plus, okay? All right, so low-carb. So what they found is on average that people have an insulin to glucagon ratio of 1.3, which is actually not that far off from longer term fasting, which is pretty cool. Again, same benefits as fasting when it comes to this ratio. All right. So how does protein impact these different glycemic statuses? That's what the key point is, because we don't live in a textbook. We don't live in a vacuum. We don't eat macronutrients in a vacuum. We actually eat them living in different states. Right? So when you're in a fasted state, when you consume straight protein, so how does protein impact it? That's what we're talking about. Protein actually decreases your insulin to glucagon ratio, means it promotes ketogenesis more. Just going to pause there. Yes, this is not a typo. Your insulin to glucagon ratio actually decreases from a fasted state when you consume protein. That's what they have found. Next, how does protein impact a standard American diet? Well, remember 4.0? When you introduce protein with someone in this glycemic status, it increases to 70. That is not a typo. It's underlined with an exclamation point. Almost a 20x increase under that glycemic status. No wonder people think that protein increases insulin so much. Because it actually does, but it's totally dependent on what you're eating or not eating, okay? 
All right, let's move on. So what about the low-carb diet? Well, when you introduce protein when someone consuming a low-carb diet on average, there's no significant change whatsoever. All right, so what do you think about that out there? If you're watching this, you say, well, I, I thought that protein was going to kick me out of ketosis. I thought protein was going to spike my insulin. Nope, not true. So let's take a look at this quote here by Dr. Roger Unger who is one of the, let's say, founding fathers of this insulin to glucagon ratio okay, in this science. So, without exception, the insulin to glucagon ratio declines as need for endogenous glucose production and or fuel production increases. Let's break this down because this, this really gets to the heart of the matter. All right, without exception, that means that in all other testing, this happens 100% of the time, without exception, okay? The insulin to glucagon ratio declines. Therefore, that's what we want most of the time, right? Because we want those benefits. doesn't mean we have to be at 100% of the time. You need to be able to build muscle all the times, of course. But most of the time, it would be nice to have this low insulin to glucagon ratio, right? So it declines as the need for endogenous glucose production and or fuel production increases. What does that mean? This is another way of saying that as the need for gluconeogenesis increases, your insulin to glucagon ratio decreases. So what's gluconeogenesis? Gluconeogenesis is making new glucose. So endogenous means that your body is making its own. As the need for it to make its own increases, glucagon ratio declines, right? So why would your body need to make its own? Well, it's because your brain, number one reason is because your brain needs uh, glucose to actually survive. People think that when they're on a ketogenic diet that their brain is just totally running on ketones. That is not true, and I'm going to link a study below to prove that, actually. Okay. Um, now, how much can run on ketones? That is still up in the air. But according to this study, it's largely at least 50% to 70 to even potentially 80% of the brain still needs to run on um, glucose depending on the state of ketogenesis. Okay, So you can read through the study yourself and, and see, see what I'm talking about. The point is, regardless of the amount, your brain is the most energy hungry thing in your body. Okay, And it needs glucose to survive. So if you're not eating carbs or if you're eating very little carbs, aka glucose, okay. Your body has to make it. How does it make it? It makes it through gluconeogenesis. How does it make it through gluconeogenesis? It uses two fuels. Well, it uses two things. It uses protein and fats. So if you consume protein, it can use that protein for new glucose for your brain. All right. Also, for your muscles, it can use it for stored uh, glycogen in your muscles as well. So if you do a really uh, in, you know, intense workout for your muscles, you do some resistance training, you deplete some of your glycogen, your body can make its own glycogen and store it. So how does it make it? Well, it can eat it, make it from protein that you eat. That's fine. It can also make it from stored body fat. So you could be in gluconeogenesis actually burning fat because your body is using your stored body fat to make the glucose that your body needs to run. Yes, most of your body can run off of fat. That is true. But some of it cannot, one of them being the brain. So let's wrap this slide up, okay? Get this point across. Don't worry about being kicked out of ketosis because for eating too much protein. In fact, if you're not eating carbs, or if you're eating a very small amount of carbs, don't worry about being kicked out of ketosis at all. Even if you were kicked out of ketosis temporarily, so what? Doesn't mean anything. Unless you're epileptic, it doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean that you're gonna stop burning fat. The insulin to glucagon ratio determines what states you're going to be in, if you're going to be in fat burning states or not. All right? So, ketogenesis is not the only way that your body burns fat, just one way. All right? So, that's that slide. So, people want to make ketones. Obviously, they have a ton of benefits. The emerging science is still coming out, right? When it comes to, you know, they're anti-inflammatory. They're anti-inflammatory for your brain. They help increase focus. They help decrease your hunger. 
they are perhaps the best antioxidants in the world, actually, when you read the research, right? There's a million benefits of ketone production. So I'm not saying don't produce ketones. Of course, that's a great thing. So if you want to produce them, there's a recipe, a three-step recipe to produce a lot of ketones. Number one, you need low insulin. If you have high insulin, you're not producing ketones, simply put. You need elevated glucagon. We just talked about that, okay? Protein elevates in a fasted and does not hinder in a low-carb state, okay? So don't worry about it. Don't worry about eating protein, okay? But now here's the thing. People don't realize carnitine, okay? Carnitine actually escorts the lipids into your mitochondria. So the mitochondria, for those who didn't watch my previous videos or don't know what mitochondria is, it is basically the part of your cells that uh, produce energy. Okay, and they need to be uh, fats, lipids need to be oxidized to produce energy. So carnitine plays a role in escorting the lipids into the mitochondria so they can be oxidized. Sounds like a pretty good thing, right? Uh, your, your body can make its own carnitine, that is true. But some people, body cannot produce enough. Uh, it, it, it depended on the person. And what they found in this study, and it, it will be in the description below, is that when it, ketogenesis actually doubles when you add carnitine into the diet. Think about that. The ketone levels in this study doubled with the addition of carnitine. So now we have a recipe, low insulin, elevated glucagon, carnitine. What could we eat that does all three? The perfect food for this ketone recipe. Drum roll. It's a steak. A steak does all three. It's the perfect recipe for making ketones. It's not going to kick you out of ketosis. It's not going to stop your fat burning. In fact, it's going to promote a lot of health benefits, just like any red meat, especially a high-quality red meat. Okay, So let's stop the nonsense. Let's stop limiting protein. Just eat fat and protein until you're full. And then go as long as you can until you eat some more fat and protein. And add a little bit of carbs if you get bored simply put okay it's really not that complicated we don't have to track a million macros we don't have to stress about eating too much protein it's total nonsense if you like this video please like comment subscribe okay i have a website called cookingandketones.com i have blog on there i have recipes on there uh, i have a patreon if you want to check that out at patreon.com ketotroy and um, thanks again.